Hello everyone, my name is Tom Stamatopoulos and today um, I'm going to spend a bit of time with you to run you through a new capability called Claire GPT. So Claire GPT is our uh, is a business orientated tool um, powered by Informatica's AI machine learning capability called Claire and Claire is our AI engine. It will continuously learn based on the commands that you provide it and it will simplify weeks worth of work and condense that into minutes and hours and thus improving productivity and return on investment. So traditionally, uh, organizations spend a lot of time trying to find and understand their data sets. Once they find their data, data uh, assets, they want to be able to uh, connect and relate them to other data sets to get a complete picture of whatever initiative they're running. It could be a marketing campaign, digital market campaign, could be financial or, or regulatory risk reporting. Um, so they wanna co collect and ingest that data and then they wanna prepare uh, the data for analysis. And that process typically can take up to 17 weeks, 17 weeks on average to do manually for non-technical data consumers. So, Today, I want to go through a demo scenario where we have the company called ABC Company, uh, ABC Co. And ABC Co. want to have an initiative to increase their revenue. Uh, there is a proactive uh, uh, business analyst called Laura, and she's a go-getter. And uh, she wants to uh, act on that uh, business initiative to increase revenue and wants to identify the highest selling products across all the regions um, and understand what the sales volumes are across all the regions by those products. Now, Laura's, um, Laura's quite lucky because she's been involved in this new rollout of what they call Claire GPT in her organization. So ABC Co have uh, always been an Informatica customer and they're, they're really excited about uh, what Claire GPT can bring to the table. So Laura had a, a had a brief in, induction. Um, pretty much, here's the address and and, and the logger credentials, and, and away you go. Uh, see if you can use it yourself. So she's taken that challenge on, and uh, she is going to log into Clear GPT. She's going to ask it a few questions. She's going to see if she can find the data set that she can relate to other data sets to get a complete view of sales revenue by region by products and um, create hopefully a new data product around customer segmentation. Uh, if she's happy with that, she then wants to put her BI reports over the top and possibly create that new data product for other consumers within the business to use. So she, wanna, she may want to operationalize that as well. Uh, Laura's logged into the UI. Um, over here, she has a navigation pane where she can start a new conversation. Uh, she has all of her previous conversations here. And if she has a conversation or a recipe that she's happy with, she can pin that for future use. Over on the right, we can see her, uh, Laura's credentials, her profile and her settings. Um, in the middle pane here, we can see different options and recommendations on how to start discovering, exploring uh, specific data assets, and uh, the uh, common questions around um, asking Claire GPT about, for example, how to create a data quality rule template and so forth. Down here is the prompt, and the prompt is where uh, Laura will be typing in her requests. And just below that, I also want to highlight there's a couple of shortcuts that users can make use of. So the hash um, symbol can be used to, to see sample prompts, so recommendations on prompts. And the at symbol can be used to specify specific tables, views, files, artifacts, data sets, and uh, user suggestions. And we'll see that throughout the uh, demonstration as well. So we're going to start off really simply where Laura is going to ask a simple question like, uh, what is Claire GPT? And... Um, Laura will get uh, a prompt back, basically describing what Clear GPT is. Let's just quickly read through that. Clear GPT is a business oriented tool uh, powered by Informatica's AI machine learning engine called Clear. It allows users to process, manage, and analyze data using natural language prompts. And there's uh, more verbiage there, and there's some citations. So uh, Laura may ask a further question of Clear: uh, What what um, can it 
help me with? Let's try that. So how, how can Clear GPT help me? And so, well, it says here, Clear GPT can help me uh, with a number of tasks, including data discovery. So Clear GPT can enable you to quickly search and discover assets available in the data catalog. Um, so the metadata repository. It can also uh, look, help with intelligent prompts, like I can see intelligent prompts down here. It provides suggestions based on conversation history. Metadata exploration, nice, uh, and data exploration. So not only can I explore the metadata about the data sets, I can also explore the data as well. That's going to be handy. Um, and data transformation. So uh, Laura says, well, I'm definitely going to need to do some data transformation as well. Okay, so the next question she wants to get down to is, well, show me the customer data sets that are relevant for customer segmentation analysis, right? She, she wants to get it on her way and um, now she understands how, what Clear GPT is and how it can help her. She really wants to understand um, what are the data sets that could help her on her journey. Now, this could take a week, two weeks, three weeks, traditionally in Laura's environment, because she they have fragmented data uh there's a tribal knowledge throughout her organization and she really um there's a number of places she can start and which will uh add time to the process whereas within here she can comfortably ask these types of questions and get a list of responses back so let's see what she's she's got uh found six of the available 10 records the following tables uh, are part of the Snowflake scan. So within the Snowflake environment, there's a database there called Platform QA, uh, and there's a schema called uh, Snow Next Gen Retail, right? Um, there's also other artifacts as well. There's a Power BI report. Um, there's some staging tables as well. And there's some orders here as well that you'll be able to, to relate. Okay, well, what a, what a great way to start. So. I think we're going to pick the first one on the list. Let's let's start with um, customers. So, uh, how about uh, let's ask? Tell me more about, uh, and we'll use remember the shortcut, the app symbol, customer. Okay, and notice it's got uh, type ahead text, so we can we can make use of that as well. That's quite handy. Hit the enter button there, and let's see see what comes back. Laura thinks to herself, while well, this information is coming back, that's quite impressive that she was able to zoom in on um, customer data really quickly. Uh, sorry, customer art, uh, uh, artifacts that are related to segmentation, customer segmentation very, very quickly. So zooming in on customer, um, she can see there's some characteristics there. Yep, yep, yep. There's some data quality being applied. There's some key columns, nice. Glossary associations, uh, fantastic. Well, if Laura's going to, going to use this data set, she needs to know that the data is complete. So let's um, show me the profiling for this data set, right? It keeps the context. Let's see if it keeps the context. Yes, it has kept the context for the table. Nice. And I can see the phone number here is complete. I can see the city is complete, indicating full presence for country. Customer ID indicating data is complete. That's great. Address, first name. Okay, all of these data elements are complete. That's great. So listen, I'm going to give that a, a thumbs up. I'm happy with that. So I, I like that uh, table. Great. Um, so that's the profiling stats. I probably also want to know where the data came from. So can you show show me the lineage? Let's see what we get here. Okay, so we've got the lineage. Let's expand all the hops, understand where the data is coming from, understand where it's going. Okay, so I can see it's coming from a CSV file in an S3 uh, folder called uh, Customer Reports is traversing through an Oracle table called Customer Portfolio. Uh, it's then traversing to our table that we have in question here called Customer. I notice customers also going down to a, a table called Customer Transaction, and it's also going to a um, 
table call, uh, sorry, a Power BI report calls customer segmentation. So this makes me think that we're on the right path. We're using the correct data set. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, probably what I want to have a quick look at now is show me the data. Let's try that. I hope I've got permissions to be able to do this. Laura says to herself, and fortunately she does, right? So, um, and it's because it's part of her role. So privacy guidelines prevent um, uh, storing sample data, but you can download from, from the case, right? So uh, let's have a look at the completeness of this data. Fantastic, yep, standardized, nice. Uh, emails are looking good as well. And there's state information there as well. So that so that's pretty good. Uh, if I wanted to have a look at the code for that, I can I can also have a look at the code. I can also download that data set if that's where I want to stop. Uh, but that's not where I want to stop. I just got started, so uh, let's let's do a bit more. So, um, how many customers do we have? Let's let's ask that. How many customers do we have? And that's going to come back with 1,069. Okay, what if I want to know how many per state? And that's telling me by state, uh, there's a number of a number per uh, per state. So that, that's fantastic. What if I wanted to see the top five states for the most sales? Can I do that? Top five states for the most sales. Show me the code of that. I can see. So that that's great. It's giving me the top five with the most sales. There's a sum on total amount. It's getting the total amount from the orders table. So there's an O there from the orders table, and it's getting the state from the uh, the custom table. Right. It's doing a join. Yeah. Great. Okay. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's hide that code. And so I'll give that a thumbs up as well. I'm happy with that. And uh, which. I want to understand the products that, sorry, the product categories that we have with the most orders. What's most in demand? And so I can see the different types of categories and I could see the counts uh, by, by those products. So I also want to see the top five states with the most orders. Where's all the business coming from? And so I can see the business is coming from California, Texas, Florida, New York, and Vancouver, right? So, so they're the top five states. Um, what if I wanted to see the revenue by product category? I wonder if I can do that. Laura says to herself. And so Laura can see the, um, the products and the revenue for those products. Okay. Well, what if she wanted to zoom in on the top five, uh, sorry, top five products that have contributed the maximum revenue. And so she can see the top five products uh, with the revenue associated. She can also, again, see, see the code. She can download um, the, the data if she needed to at this particular point in time. Um, we're going to Get a, we're, we're feeling quite confident now. And so we want to uh, get a bit more sophisticated. And, and what Laura wants to do is actually show the customers that live in, in um, the top, uh, in three of these states out of the top five, uh, with the number of orders, uh, with the average order amount, and the number of products purchased with the revenue generated in each product category. Let's see if we can get that to to come back and let's see why it wouldn't. Uh, I'm quite confident because we pretty much segmented the data um, up to this point from all of these same angles. And all this is doing is really putting all of the bits together. So it's bringing the categories together, the product categories, the revenue, the number of products purchased, the average orders, uh, the number of orders, um, the 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 last name and the first name nice um so i can see the code there as well so i can see a whole bunch of aggregations laura's thinking to herself thank goodness i didn't have to write this out 
and uh, there's some standardization there as well and she's she's quite happy with that she can also uh, spread that and, and and have a look at that as well um she also notices that she can create a mapping she's noticed by these prompts down here and create a mapping and she said well that would be quite helpful for the engineering team if i could um because I'm, I'm happy with this data set what i'd like to do is also operationalize that uh, for other team members to be able to consume so i want this data set to be refreshed on a frequency uh, that i define and um we need fresh data at whatever that frequency is uh, so we need a data pipeline to, to to get that information on a regular basis so we've asked Claire GPT to uh, generate that mapping for us and and she's done that um we can go have a look at that but before I I do that I just want to also download the data set so Laura can get access to this data now right she can get access to this data now put her Power BI reports over this and start to do some analysis on this on this data and, and look for uh, revenue opportunities. So Laura's happy with the information and the new data product she has created. Um, and also on the flip side, she's been productive as well. And she is generating uh, uh, integration mapping so that the integration team, the engineering team can um, operationalize that within the data pipelines and the nightly process. Uh, and, and there is the data pipeline there. It can be uh, run as an elastic mapping, as ETL, or in, in push down mode, however uh, the engineering team want to deploy that. So bringing this back up, um, Laura has had a very productive session. So in the last 10, 15 minutes, she has been able to um, hit the objective of identifying products, uh, high selling products, identifying the regions they're selling in and uh, the volume, the, the sales volumes that they're, they're selling at as well. So she was able to interact with Claire GPT in a matter of moments, create a brand new data product, uh, understand where the data is coming from, make sure that it is fit for business use and create a new data product. Not only was she able to do that, she was also able to help the engineering team out and say, hey, listen, here is a um, mapping artifact that you can now operationalize as well. Okay, uh, so Laura's feeling pretty chuffed with herself, and um, I think you would be too if you were in Laura's uh, situation. So I just wanted to uh, end on that note. Thank you. My name's Tom Stamatopoulos. I hope you've enjoyed this quick whirlwind demo of Claire GPT and the power that it can unleash um, within your organization and the productivity gains that can be realized. Um, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this um, and send me an email if you want any more information uh, on this topic. Thank you.